So now we're ready for the body of the proof. And we've done lots of setup so that this next part, hopefully, fingers crossed, will go relatively quickly. So let's let f of x, here's the thing we're interested in. Not just x cubed, not just x squared, like any power of x. So I'm calling it x to the power of n. Sorry, that was a bit of a messy n. Okay, so what I'm going to do is write f dash x, and I'm going to use this different way of working out the derivative, right? It's really the same, it's just dressed up slightly differently, okay? So f dash x will equal, all right, here we go, the limit as, now normally I would say h approaches zero, but this time I'm going to use this other form, and instantly, hopefully, once we've written it down, you'll see why this other form is more useful to us, okay? C approaches x, right? So this is this other lens through which we can look at the same diagram, okay? Now, on the top, I would normally have f of x plus h take away f of x, but I've got a different way of looking at this. So I've got f of x take away f of c. What's f of x in this case? It's just this guy, right? x to the power of n. What's f of c? That's everywhere you saw an x. Don't put an x in there. Put c. So it's going to be take away c to the power of n. Right? There's f of x. There's f of c. Yep. Let me just write that down. So here's f of x. Right? To say f of c, by definition, it means everywhere you saw an x in here, don't, don't put in x, put in c instead. That's your function notation back from the start of the year. Okay, so that used to be an x, but I swapped it out for a c. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. There's our numerator. What's on, oops, what's on the denominator? It's just x minus c, right? That's always the same no matter what function you've got. Okay. Now, we went through all this algebraic work over here so that we can come up with this long, gross result. It looks really gross right now. But when we work with it here, you're going to see it's going to come out Beautifully, watch what happens. Limit as c approaches x, because we always have to write that out the front. Now this guy here, before we did our work this morning, there's nothing you can do with that. It's like, what am I supposed to do with this? Gross, I have no idea how to factorize it. But you know how to factorize this now, right? So I'm going to have these little brackets at the front, and then these really long brackets at the end. What's in the front? It'll be a minus b, but what are my a and b in this case? They are x and c. So instead of writing a minus b, I'm going to write x minus c. That, that's not a coincidence, is it? Right? Because I've got that somewhere else. I'll come to that in a minute once I've written my whole numerator. Okay? You see it? Okay. Now, I want to do the rest of my expansion here. So instead of my a's and b's, I've got x's and c's, right? Yeah, very good. x to the power of n minus 1. That's here. Do you see it starting to unfold here, right? There's the first one. What's the next one? Okay, so I'm going to have one less of these x's, and then there's going to be a, well, in this case, yeah, my, my b is equal to c, so it's that. One less x and one more c. Okay, good. Next one. Uh, x to the power of n minus 1. Yeah, 1 less x, again, bless you, and then 1 more c. So instead of c to the power of 1, c squared. c squared. Very good. How do you know how long you continue to Okay, very good. How long do I keep going for this? Now, the question is, um, it depends based on how big n is, right? But that's why, I mean, I, I kind of say, you know what? You could do this for any number of n, for n equals uh, 2 or 3 or 4, or like a hundred, and you're just going to keep on going until you get to this point. So I'm going to write dot, dot, dot. What will my very last term be? C to the power of n minus 1. All of the x's are gone. They've all like gone down, 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 disappeared. And then you get left with this last guy, which is the letter C to the power of n minus 1. You absolutely must write that dot, 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 because what it indicates is, hey, hey, this pattern, it, it keeps going. I don't know how long it keeps going for, but it just, it just keeps going till you get to this. Okay? Now, even though that was long and gross, that's just the numerator. What's on the denominator? X minus C. Thank you, X minus C. Oh, then X minus C. Okay, and then you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is what we've been trying to do with these gross limit things for the whole time, right? I can't just put in C equals X. You can't do it, because then what happens here? What happens on the denominator? If c were equal to x, you get 0. I'm like, I can't divide by 0. But this point here, through this magical 
expansion, factorization, right? You have this cancelling happening on the top and bottom. Do you see that? Okay, so I know it's a long thing to write out, but it's really important that we do it. I've got the limit, it's still there, but the top and the bottom, x minus c, they're, they're gone now. They're just cancelled out, okay? So all that leaves me with is this gross, long-looking thing here, but I do need to write it all out. x to the n minus 1, x to the n minus 2c, keeps going down, right? Uh, x to the n minus 3, how many c's? Two. Two of them. And then it just keeps on going, it's merry way, until it gets to the end, like so. Right. Okay. Have to, do we have to write x n minus three c squared? I I generally think that's a really good spot to have because you want to establish this pattern. Your x's are going down, your c's are going up, and in this exact way, um, three is generally regarded as a good um, number to set up a pattern. I'll talk a bit more about later on why that's why three and not some other number. Okay. All right. Now, can you do me a favor? Just turn back for a second to the first time we were doing this all of this limit stuff, and we had the limit as h approaches zero, just turn back to the, the, the most recent time where you've got that working in your book. Okay? Now, just, you might have to turn a few pages. Uh, yeah, that'll do, okay? Now, anywhere you've got that, hopefully you see, we do all of this work while that limit is out there at the front, until such a time as we can say, oh, now I can actually let h equal zero, right? It's like, oh, I don't have h on the denominator anymore. I could just put in h equal zero and it doesn't cause me any problems, right? So just have a look, that's what we do, right? So that's the point we've come to right now. You're like, oh, I don't have a denominator anymore. I can actually say not just what happens when c gets close to x, what if c actually became x, right? So now turn back to your current page, watch. We do. we do. We have a whole lot of X's and a whole lot of C's, but watch what happens, right? I'm now going to, this is what we call evaluate the limit, right? I'm going to say what happens when C actually becomes X. We're going to do it term by term. I'll do it in colors just to make it a little more obvious. This X to the N minus 1. What happens to that when C becomes X? It, it has no C's in it, right? So he's like, I don't, I don't care. I'm still just going to be X to the N minus 1, just like I was before. Okay. But then when you have a look at this next guy here, it does change. Let's just look at that one term. Okay? So it starts with x to the n minus 2. But then see that, that letter c? I can just treat it as if it were x. So I'm going to not write c anymore, I'm going to write x. Okay? Uh, let's keep going along. Have a look at this guy here. Right? It starts with x to the n minus 3. But then instead of saying c squared, squared, I can treat it as x squared, right? Because what I'm doing is I'm seeing, oh, now I can treat c as it gets towards x. I can just replace it with x. I then say, oh, I've established the pattern. So then with the dot, dot, dot. Say that again, sorry. We do. Yeah, go back and have a look. Not right now, but you do, we do. Okay. Um, what's the very last term? What's the very last term? Uh, the power of n minus 1. Yeah, we just, we just swapped it out. But look, yes, you've got this, it's completely symmetrical, right? Now I can just think about this with um, index laws, right? Um, this x to the n minus 1 hangs out the front. What happens here? This is x to the n minus 2 times x to the 1. What happens when you multiply two numbers of the same base? What do you do with the powers? You add them, thank you very much. You add them, think carefully, right? What's n minus 2 plus 1? n minus 1. And then the next one. What's n minus 3 plus 2? n minus 1. And then you know what? You get a whole bunch of them, right? And your last term is this. Now this is the last important question, right? How many of these things do I have? Now hold that thought. How many did I have here? I had 2. How many did I have here? I had 3. How many did I have here? 4. How many do I have here? I have n of them. I have n of these things. So therefore, my final line is, how many of these things do I have n of them times x to the n minus 1? Yikers. Yikers. Holy cow, <laughs> right? Now, I, that was a lot of work, right? That was a lot of work. But what you've just proven is that you can have not just x cubed, not just x squared, not just x to the 4. For any power of x, you never need to use first principles again, you can just use this. We've just established we have 
proved our conjecture not through like I think I saw it happen a lot of times. It seems to this seems to be a pattern, right? This is not a just I it's, I seem to see a pattern over and over again. It's proof. It's true forever. Okay. So this is our f dash x. This is our rule that we thought was true before, but now we know it's true, and we know why. Okay.